What's up, people? Welcome to Streets to Sweets Podcast. Where the streets are representative of all the paths we take to reach our pinnacle. Man, we thank you guys for uh, joining in. I'm Chaz Davis, your host. Uh, I'm joined by the one and only Jerron Ham, you yep. know what I'm saying? Co host. Uh, you know, and yeah, we're just excited to bring this to you guys. Man. Yeah. So, Chaz, uh, Streets to Sweets, because this is the first episode, I don't want the viewers to miss this part. When I first heard it, I thought it was something like like being from the hood and, and getting into the corporate world. But once right. you better described it to me, I was able to understand the real goal behind the name and also the type of content we're aiming to put put out. So when you came up with the name Streets to Sweets, what what did you have in mind? Uh, well, honestly, man, it, it stems back to just um, being able to adapt. So, uh, you know, we both we both come from you know uh, football past uh, and and streets. It's just something that is symbolic of, uh, like I said earlier, just the path you've taken, uh, but not necessarily of your neighborhood. You know, everybody don't have to be, you know, a, a former dope boy or gangster or anything like that to, you know, be successful or, you know, say they came from the streets, just strictly uh, focused on just the paths we've taken, you know, to get to where we want to be. Whatever avenue. Okay, so you could, the streets for you could be nursing, the streets right. for you could be entrepreneurship, it could be trucking, it could be. YouTube, it could, whatever that path is, that's what the streets is. And the yeah. sweets is the pinnacle, as you the mentioned. Pinnacle. So Ooh. the ultimate goal. Exactly. So, okay. You know, so, uh, you know, just, just, so just popped it off. Keep going like that. Uh, I, I would say for me, you know, my streets were, uh, I've had a couple different streets, a few different uh, paths, a few different avenues. You know, I started with, uh, with sports, of course. Uh, I started early, you know what I'm saying? Um, maybe like eight years old. I was running track, competing competitively across the uh, nation. Uh, got all the way up into high school, uh, signed the NDA, or NIL, I mean, not the NDA. I say, dang, what, <laughs> what kind of business you got going on? Nah, signed the NIL, um, you know, went off and played ball, and, uh, you know, that's that's where my, my, my path started, you know, becoming intersections and overpass and uh, exits, and I was able to, you know, take a couple different routes, uh, one being Chronicle Productions. Uh, for those that don't know, I am CEO. Uh, owner operator of Chronicle Productions. We're a small, I ain't gonna say small. We're a production company based out uh, of yeah. out of DFW, uh, serving nationwide. Uh, I've, you know, done a service company. Uh, we got a couple other things under the way. You know, what I mean, food truck being one, and uh, you know, you know, one one path that I have taken is led to me and you meeting. It. Right you know, now, we we sitting down doing this. Right, no, no, that's dope. I think. As an entrepreneur, and a lot of entrepreneurs will probably view this, we got many different paths we take because as an entrepreneur, you you don't know really what that what that winner is going to be. Right. And even when you find that winner, it's something else that's going to catch your attention. I think that's the beautiful thing about being an entrepreneur is being able to hear an idea or see an opportunity and expound upon it and ultimately making a new street for yourself to reach that uh, that pinnacle. That's yeah. dope. So for me, since we're talking about the streets, I'm Jerron Ham, CEO of Pro Hall TV. Uh, Five-year NFL vet. That was my first street. And then I got into personal training. Kind of failed at that. I turned my whole garage into, like, this dope gym. I'm going a, I'm to a send a picture so we could put it on this episode. Dope gym, but the HOA shut that down. So then I got into the trucking industry uh, where I went and got my own CDL, drove for myself for a little under two years. Then we began to grow the company. Current market conditions and other things piled up. So that street closed down. We uh, parked all trucks and ended up leasing and selling them. And so now we are working on uh, building the Pro Hall TV brand. We're working on a couple things that we can't mention yet until we start getting them rolling. Um, then things on YouTube, things with affiliate marketing, things with helping other companies brand, business consulting. And so we got a whole highway, it sounds like, in yeah. this room just between the two of us. Yeah. Um, but no, that's dope, man. I appreciate you for having me on in the, as a co-host. I uh, I was thinking about it that last episode. So for y'all watching, this is going to be the first episode. But I was a guest on the last episode with Chaz. And uh, we was like, man, it's going to be hard to find a guest every week. I was like, let's let's just team up. And Chaz was like, I'm with it. Yeah. And so uh, that's how we get here. Um, so what's the – outside of the name Streets to Sweets, what would you like our viewers to gain from – from the content that we're going to be putting out? Uh, I think, you know, first and foremost, uh, just this being a a place of accountability. You know what I'm saying? I know uh, we talked about 
uh, on the last episode, last time we linked up, you know, just how um, us working together this, yeah. uh, this previous summer, uh, we built the system of uh, accountability. And, uh, you know, that's something we want to build with, you know, all our viewers, you know, across all um, – all, all business, you know what I'm saying, all uh, areas of business, you know, whether it be trucking, um, people in uh, production, um, you know what I'm saying, what's some other stuff we do? Uh, working out. Working yeah. out, uh, fitness Goals. gurus, you know what I'm saying, Any, anything, you know what I'm saying, anybody that's driven, you know, we just want want people to be able to, you know, be able to tune into this, this podcast and, uh, you know, take away something, you know what I'm yeah. saying, be motivated. Um Get some type of you know mental workout, and you know just just leave here being better. So because that's all we you know saying we built on. Yeah, I think it's a, it's very important for everybody to know that we're not coming here to sell you nothing. We're not coming here to show fancy cars. We're not coming nah. here to show vacations. We come here <laughs> to keep it real with you. Most we are uh, two individuals who reach a lot of success, a lot of losses, and gain success again. Uh, like I mentioned, the NFL that was one success for me. Uh, then that kind of that ended trucking was another success that ended. But I think being able to maneuver when, uh, when adversity hits is a big part of, of being in the streets, finding yeah. a new street and ultimately knowing that the the destination never changes that ultimate pinnacle and reaching that, that vision you see for yourself in life uh, has to, has to never die out. Even if the path changes, you know, sure. the vehicle to get you there changes that goal or that destination has to remain, uh, you know, steadfast within your, within your goals. Uh, you jumped into it. So accountability, when you think about that, that's, that's really a hard thing for people to, they, they may say they're held accountable or have accountability groups. But when you think about accountability, what's true accountability? Cause today you held me accountable because this studio is 59 minutes from my house. <laughs> and I, I text Chaz. I was like, yo, we're going to have to figure something out. Cause yeah. we right in the middle of traffic, but accountability, you know, ultimately, brought me here uh, so when you think about accountability for like your everyday person like I said not talking about these these uh social media influencers and those type of conversations but just your your person who may work at you know you may work at Microsoft right and you have goals but you're getting tied into the rat race so to speak what type of uh, things can they do to to hold themselves accountable to not getting caught up in the day to day and continue to reach after their goals. I think first, um, most importantly, you gotta have vision. You gotta know where you want to end up. All right. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of people that's out here, you know, doing the same type of thing we're doing on these type yeah. of platforms, trying to, like you said, sell things and telling you don't need your nine to five. I mean, it's okay to work a nine to five first and foremost. Uh, but if that's not your, if if you're not sure on what you want to end up doing, you know what I'm saying, continue to work that, but figure out what it is that you want to do in the end. Because, um, you know what I'm saying, without vision, you ha you have nowhere to go. You, you can't reach a pinnacle if you don't know where it is. Um, so first knowing where where you want to go, and then secondly, even figuring out what it's going to take to get there. So, um, you know, that's that's why, I, you know, we call it streets, you know what I'm saying, like, all streets aren't built the same. You know, you might need a four-wheeler to get to one right. place you're going. You might, you might need a fast car. You might need a tow truck. You know, you might need somebody to tow you to that point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, finding those people, like, uh, just like me and you, you know, uh, we hold each other accountable. You know, we we lean on each other at times, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I think, you know, third is just being a good person. Like, um uh, I think, you know, just, just on a personal level, me between me and you, that's something that uh kind of like gravitated me towards you. It's just I knew you were a genuine person. A lot of people, you know, especially like people that's been older than me, I'm young, you know, so I'm twenty four years old and I've been I've been in entrepreneurship since I was like nineteen. Um and mm. I've I've had a couple couple of mentors, people that I looked up to was, you know, leaning on for guidance and the gems that you know that they were dropping and things they were telling me to do it just didn't align with me, like yeah. morally, and mm -hmm. it was more so like money driven. So I think you know just just being being true to your morals, being true to your you know saying your your business business ethics. If that's what you you know you get into entrepreneurship or just you per, as a person, you know just staying true to yourself. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. You yeah. know, I, and so we speak about entrepreneurship because. You know, we're both heavily uh, passionate about that. Um, but then in, uh, in other areas of life, because 
although we're heavily passionate about entrepreneurship, there are a lot of people who need to be held accountable just to hit the gym right. or need to be held accountable to be a better wife or a better husband, be a better father, a better mother, a better friend. And so uh, when we talk about accountability. I think one of the main things that it boils down to is stepping outside of yourself to to achieve whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Right. Um, I had a teammate back in San Francisco and one of his things was was porn. And he was like, he needed to stop watching porn. He wasn't addicted or anything like that. He just knew it was something that would better his life. Right. But he couldn't do that by himself. It's hard to to stay in your own circle, um, a circle of one, and and achieve any real you know any real ground on the goals you're trying to make. So, uh, step one for him was to open up and and uh, seek help on like you know, hey, I need somebody to hold me accountable. And so I think they end up getting like some website. Some browser that if your phone watched porn, then it would alert the accountability partner, um, something like that. Or or workouts. My group, we work out at 550 every morning. This morning, literally this morning, I text. I was like, man, I'm kind of tired from this week. Yeah. Somebody else said I'm kind of tired, too. I was like, so what that mean? Then one, one more person came in and said, I mean, we about to get it in. Yeah. Bring y'all ass to the gym. Let's get it. I was like, OK. All right. Well, let's do it. Uh, so I think, you know. Being able to find the right people to be able to help, uh, hold you accountable uh, is really the major step into achieving anything. Um, now, how do we do that? You know, how, how do we find each other? That's that's really, really uh, some interest in myself because it just started out as a video shoot. Yeah. Where I was like, you know, who's this skinny dude here? <laughs> I was that was skinny man. I thought I was in yeah. shape back well, then. Well, compared man. to me, nah, I, I was about two sixty. Yeah, I was. I was. I was small, man. I had. I still had lost a lot of weight back then. But you know, uh, our, our, uh, our paths crossed. Uh, you were in a video that I had got uh, hired to shoot for like a um, boot camp or something. Yeah, fitness. Um, so shot that I got all your, you know, your Instagram information and all that. Uh, and then like a week later, I think I started uh, my service company, and I remember you. You know, we talked. Um, at the shooting, you was telling me uh, that you had like uh, the trucking company going and all that, uh, and you know we specialized in uh, uh, vehicle detailing, you know, yeah. uh, car detailing, interior and detailing, and all that. And so I had reached out. I, I, you know, this is another thing. So, but I mean, when I started that company, I had I I went on my uh, social media page, uh, Instagram, and every every one of my followers, I just typed up, "Have you heard of at the Royal Care, which was the name of the company." And I copied and pasted and I sent it to every one of my followers. Oh, for real? And so, uh, you know, I probably got like a good 60, 70 responses. But, you know, those responses turned into, you know, follows and, you know, bookings and everything. So it, it, it grew, you know, real fast. But uh, I sent it to you and uh, you replied and you said, uh, you said, you know, what are our services you offer? I think I came through and uh, like the next day picked up like some junk you had in a, um, Garage, in the garage, yeah. yeah. All them kids, I got three yeah. kids. It gets junky. We get yeah. toy boxes and all types all of stuff. Types in of there. stuff. And so uh, from there, it just you know we just kind of, I guess we kind of both saw like, I know I saw at the, at the um, at the photo shoot or yeah. video shoot. I was like I was like nah, bro, got something going, and you know what I'm saying. Uh, I feel like I could potentially help him out, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I threw out what about a year year into it. Uh, I, I was cleaning up your trucks for you when they would uh, come through and do, do resets and all that. And um, maybe what, about another f- four or five months after that, you brought me onto the team. We hopped into it together and, you know, we've been up ever since. So. Yeah. Now that goes into, um, it's a couple of things from what you said there, but number one, you let your light shine by being present. And so, so many people get boxed in, to where they don't come out the house, they don't use their talents. Whether it's large scale or big scale, we were just shooting a little workout video on Clyde right. Warren. Not, we weren't shooting for Nike. We weren't shooting for for anything like that. Nah. It was just a simple workout video. Um, but from there, then connecting and seeing, like, okay, you, you're trying to do something else. I I'm never wanting to be a person that doesn't support somebody who's trying to do something. Right. And so, uh, whether it was large scale or or small scale, so it was, you had just started the company. I was like, all right, well. We could work then, you know, you got something to offer. I got something that needs that service. Let's work. And then I didn't even see it becoming this from that. I just was like, let me support, uh, let me support the Royal Care. 
Um, but something else you mentioned, you sent a message to everybody on your friends list. I, I sent every one of my followers, ghost followers, uh, and really. So I got like I probably got like twenty five hundred followers or something on Instagram right now. Follow me on Instagram. You know, people that's tuning in at the underscore Taz Davis and Chronicle Protection. I'll put it in the link in the description. But uh, you know, so I, I just you know, um, you know this about me, but like um I'm I'm not my the person that holds myself accountable, but I'm not gonna sit around and like bullshit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Facts. So like if I if I say I'm gonna do something, like I'm, I'm a man of my word. So mm-hmm. I try to I told myself I was gonna start the company and that it was gonna work this time, or you know, not not saying like like things that failed in the past and whatnot, but I was just serious about it. And so I was like, all right, whatever. It, one of one of my something I tell myself all the time in all situations, I say however, whichever. Yeah. So however, however I got it, you know what I'm saying. However, I got to do it, whichever way it comes, whichever way it has to happen. So that was that was my however, whichever moment. Uh, with that one, just every everybody, boom, boom, mm-hmm. boom, and. 2,000 people later, it, it, the page blew up. I think I got like 500 followers, 600 followers on there or something. So. Nah, that's dope. Um, I asked that because what, number one thing, uh, if you were able to even just however, whichever, if you had that mindset going into it, one or two things probably had to happen, and I'm guessing here, but either you hadn't done it before or you had done it before and it went bad or good, but that built something up in you to be able to say, I'm going to just try Try it next time. Yeah, a little bit. I I had um, I'm real vocal. Like mm-hmm. uh, it's, well, I, I'm not gonna say real vocal. I used to be real vocal. Uh, but now I, I kind of like keep it like in a in a circle. I got like I got like you. I have a couple friends that I you know I talk business with or you know plans goals just personally and uh you know saying in entrepreneurship. But at that time, uh, I had expressed you know what I was had planned for that company with, you know, a couple of friends and family, they just didn't believe in it. With the Royal Care? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and it, I think, um, just the doubt itself, like fueled me more than anything. So it was like, it was like all right, I'm like, I, I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to do this for myself because I want to, but also just to show you like, yeah, to believe in me, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you don't have to, but just to, to know when I say I'm going to do something, like I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. Right. I see, a, um, see a lot of posts about, People saying, you know, my friends don't support me, yeah. my family don't support me, or they don't believe in me. How did you take it when you when you expressed this want to for this business, and then the the response wasn't, you know, like let's do it. It was it was some some I, backlash. I know it's nothing like personal because uh, a lot of my friend, all my family, uh, a lot of my friends, they they can't understand what I'm getting at. Like they mm-hmm. they they don't understand, you know, like. They haven't gone through what I've gone through, uh, and my my parents, like uh, my mom, she she didn't grow up and was you know pushed to be like, all right, if you want to start a business, you can start a business. She had no idea what that was until I I came along. So like everything I I've accomplished, I'm not gonna take full credit, you know, what I'm saying uh, people that supported the business and uh, you know just mentors I've had like yourself, um, but for the most part. I've learned a lot of stuff on my own. I've taught myself how to start a business. I, I filed my own LLCs. I filed my own uh, bank accounts. So like, it wasn't it wasn't a shock to me that they didn't really gravitate towards the idea. But it was the doubt in it that kind of like rubbed me the wrong way because I've I've done it before. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I had a lot of success with it. And you know, you would think, you know, this time around, you'd be like, all right, well. Maybe we should, you know, mm-hmm. get involved somehow. But it was the opposite. And so that's what turned into, like, all right, I'm just going to have to show you. No, nah, nah, I think you touched on an important point. When uh, when the people closest to you don't support you initially, that's fine. Like you said, don't take it personal because they know you on a on a different level. Right. They don't know you as as a, a CEO. They don't yeah. know you as a business owner. They don't know you as a, a innovator. And so sometimes – People can project their own fears on you, their own, you know, their own disbeliefs in what's possible, mm. which is fine. Our our mission as entrepreneurs and our mission as uh, people who believe in, in uh, people of faith is to do it and then bring them along. Try to change their way of thinking. Right. Um, some some it'll work with some it won't. But that's not on us to worry about. Um, but getting back to when you message all those people. A lot of people will have a 
a reluctancy to do that. It'll be, you know, how is this going to make me look? Because right. if you're sending it to your friends, you're sending it to people who know you. Uh, probably some people, like you said, ghost followers who don't know you. Mm -hmm. So perception, especially in our in our generation. Well, I'm 30, so I'm what I'm a millennial. What are you? I, I don't even know oh, what 24 maybe. is. Yeah, it's not too far off. But perception is a huge thing uh, with social media, and that was one of, one of my biggest uh, issues with starting Pro Hall TV. When I started Pro Hall TV, I kept it completely separate from my personal Instagram. Like when I would post about it, I created mm -hmm. a whole new Insta uh, a whole new Instagram for it. YouTube channel. And I told myself, once I reach a thousand subscribers, then I'll expose it to the people right. close to me. Looking back, the only reason I did that was out of fear of what the people close to me would think. Um, so what would you say to a person who, who has this business idea uh, and they're nervous to expose it to the people closest to them? Uh, I, I think um, first you need to look at why you even worried about that. Uh, the opinion of someone else, right? Um, like, if it's something that you're passionate about, mm -hmm. it shouldn't matter what anybody has to say. Um, it's it's kind of like, because in a sense, it's love. You know what I mean? Like, when you, you're in love with somebody, you don't care what anybody else thinks. So if right. you, you know, you got a project you want to do, a business you want to start, a, a goal you want to reach, a weight you want to reach, anything like that, uh, it, it shouldn't matter what anybody else thinks. It's only what's in your heart, you know what I'm saying, what you believe and how you want to be. I mean, put it like this. If you're going to care about what uh, people think, then you should definitely, you know what I'm saying, you should definitely care about what you think yourself, you know what I'm saying, more than mm. anything, you know, so. Hold on, hold on, we can't brush past that. I'll say that again. So if you're going to if you're gonna be worried about what anybody else thinks, you should your opinion of what you think is going to become should be the most important, you know. I never heard that. I never heard that. So. I think a lot of times what you're saying is people get so caught up into the outside. Right. So what's so-and-so going to say? John yeah. John going to think this stupid. My circle of influence uh, is going to think this weak. Right. And to the point where what they think is no longer relevant. Most definitely. So and I, I now think they thinking for uh, They letting other people's thoughts dictate you know, their emotion. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think, uh, I know we was talking earlier this week um, about something I came across on, online. It was called like a, uh, uh, conophobia and mm -hmm. that's the uh, phobia of being ordinary and I think uh, I think that's the biggest thing that kills dreams like what would you say so like I know for me at times when I do want to start something it's the fear of like I get I get scared of like letting myself down mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying not not necessarily scared to try it and uh, you know and fail doing it but just the fact like you know, I had this idea and it and it didn't work out like I wanted it to, but you know, I'm I'm getting becoming better with like coping with that. So, what would you what would you say is like uh, you know, more of a determining factor for you or or motivation for you, like fear of failure or you know, what I'm saying just fear of like opinion or like self doubt. Yeah. Uh, well, I think when you get close to rock bottom, nothing scares you anymore. Yeah. And so, uh, there were situations where. It was like, like after the league, it's like, what do I do next? Right. And my money's running out. So I was scared. That was that was real fear. So to me, start trying to start a new business is not scary at all. Um, I, I don't fear letting myself down because I do enough research uh, to know, like, OK, is this something I want to do? Things I look for now is what can make me the most amount of money with the least amount of effort and not because I'm lazy, because I can stack those up yeah. and then I can put my effort into the one that's going to make the most amount of money uh, that requires more effort. So if it's, if it's taking my time, effort and energy, then it better be producing more than these other little streams of income. Um, from that though, when I, you see my whiteboard, I got ideas. I'm just going to write them down. Yeah. And then because, because I, I think entrepreneurs are like that. Like, uh, I always I, thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. I think thinkers are like that. And I think most entrepreneurs are probably, Thinkers, yeah. deep thinkers, like okay, what well, what's that? How can I get into this? Um, and seeing how can I generate another stream of income? It's not necessarily that I want to, you know, be in uh, multiple different businesses to say I'm a serial entrepreneur. It's more so because all right, I got three kids. All right, this income is for her college. This income is for her car. This income is for his, you know, college or whatever, whatever the the expense may be. Uh, but the determining factor when it comes to trying things new is there's no reason to be scared. Right. I think 
you have you now you have to be realistic. Like if you don't have the funds to start, then work on getting the funds to right. start. And in the meantime, do as much research as you could possibly can. Reach out to as many people in that field as you can and really get a grasp of if you can really do it. And not the you right now may not be the you who can actually carry this out. So if you have doubts, well, let's work on why you have doubts um, and then revisit it when right. when you built that, that yeah, muscle. I, I think, you know, like you said, building that muscle is like most most important thing. Like when I when I started Royal Care, uh, man, I had, I had never cleaned. I had never detailed cars. You know, mm-hmm. I hadn't had done that as a profession. But like my mind said, uh, I, and I think this just comes from like football. It's like, uh, man, uh, you know, you know, we, we're doing installs. Yeah. You're going to mess up the first, first yeah, three, get three four out. days. Yeah, you're going to get cussed out. You're going to, you know, be frustrated with yourself. Like, why am I not getting this? So I, I, I applied that same, like, mindset with, uh, you know, all my businesses. Like, even with Chronicle Productions. Like, when I first started it, I wasn't, you know, the best editor. I wasn't the best videographer. You know, I wasn't, I didn't even have a camera. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I I, I had, uh, I was borrowing people's cameras going and doing projects and, you know, just doing it that way. But I was like, all right, I'm going to learn from each one. You know what I'm saying? I, I, and I took my mistakes and, uh, you know, all the doubt that I had in it. All right, no, that wasn't so bad. You know what I'm saying? I can do this again. You know what I'm saying? So, like, my whole thing is, like, if I can if I can see it happen, if I can see it happen, I can do it. And if I can do it, I can do it 100 times again. You okay. Know? So, you know, people, uh, people like to hear numbers. Yeah. And me and you have talked numbers. So, number one, what is Chronicle Productions? And number two, being someone so young, What's the what was your best year? What did that look like? Because I know we said we ain't gonna talk about like what we got and all this, but yeah. people still need to know what we've done. Uh, that way, they can better relate and know okay. what's possible. So, you said what is Chronicle Productions? Yep. So first, Chronicle Productions is a production company. We specialize in uh, videography, whether that be music videos, uh, weddings, promo videos, recaps. Um, I've done podcasts. I've done uh, like just highlights for um, athletes in the NFL, NCAA, uh, high school even. Um, what else do we do? We do a little bit of photography. Um, workout videos. Workout videos. <laughs> um, vlogs. Um, you know, any any type of content uh, that, you know, that you want to do, you know, to, to present some, present yourself, present your business. Like we, we got you, you know. And uh, so... I started I started Chronicles in 2018, 2019. I had got suspended from the football team. For it? Huh? For starting it? No. no oh, I, okay. I had I got suspended. Um I had a lot of stuff I was I was going uh, through, you yeah. know, personally. We'll um, get into that later on later episodes. Yeah, we'll, we'll dive into all that. And um I just wasn't focused. I wasn't focused on school. I wasn't focused on you know, becoming a better athlete, I was worried about home. And mm-hmm. so uh, I started kind of like transitioning, like, all right, maybe this, you know, football stuff is not for me. And maybe it's not, it's not going to work out the way I thought it was. So I hit the ground running. I had already knew that I liked it. I, I did it all the way up through high school. And, um, you know, it, it just kind of, once I started, it just kind of, I threw it out there. It just took off. Um, now in terms of like, Revenue, my best year was the pandemic year, you know, Girl. ironically. Um, mm. People's people's racking up the music videos. Oh, man, it was it was crazy. Like and um, from from March to March to like December, I had made like six figures. And 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 it came fast. Like I had I had just looked at my statement. And it was like, wow. Yeah, you know what I'm I touched all that. Yeah, and you know, just being that young, I'm like maybe like 21 years old, so like I'm, I'm having money come in and just not being smart with it. Um, I and, feel that, you know, and uh, I, I I learned I learned quick. That was the, I think that was like a turning point because when I looked at that, and I was like, man, I don't have nothing to show for. Mm-hmm. And it was like, all right, like you you really need to like lock in because this can be big. Yeah, and you you know you're not even really just you know I was still taking. Taking uh taking classes in school and stuff, so I was like, man, this could this could be a lot bigger than what you even expected. Mm-hmm. So, so six figures from an idea that turned into action uh, right. that ultimately led you to touching the amount of money that a lot of people probably can't even think about. Mm-hmm. Although it's although 
with these gas prices, six <laughs> figures need to be the minimum. But uh, sure. unfortunately, it's not. But congratulations to you for for being able to reach that and also okay. being able to figure out, OK, I didn't do it right. And and that's kind of my story with the league. Uh, I think for people who are young, though, when you get any substantial amount of money, it's kind of hard to know what to do. Right. And you got so many people telling you what they would do. But Most they can't definitely. really, they don't know what they really would do. Most definitely. When I used to get them checks in the league, I said all the same things. I'll do this, I'll do that. But uh, it's different when it's in your face. Facts. I and mean, a lot of times it's you don't know what you got. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know when it's coming back. So some people are paralyzed to invest. And then in my case, and a lot of athletes' case, you expect it to keep coming back. Yeah. But I think that's dope that you were able to, to uh, create that and continue to create that. Figure it out. All right. I don't have nothing to show for it, and then continue to go, and, and he's still making that plus some. So that's uh that's big to you. Um, so going that just made me think about you know how you got your jump, you had reluctancies, but still went for it, um, and how that can speak to people who probably got those same ideas. My thing to you, so for the people out there who who have ideas, who have goals, y'all seen how fast twenty twenty two went by. Quick. And y'all see where we at in January already. Yeah, it's about to be February. Right. So uh, whether that goal is weight loss, whether that goal is to figure your finances out, whether that goal is to, you know, get in a meaningful relationships, network, whatever it is, time is not waiting. And I don't know if hitting 30 flipped the switch for me, but I'm just all in on any idea. Whatever it is, I'm 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 going for it. And to the people who are who are hesitant, time is not going to wait. So it's like. You would rather fail sooner than later mm-hmm. and go ahead and knock it out and, and figure out, you know, how you could fix it or if it's even for you. Because right. sometimes people say stick it out, but sometimes those ideas aren't really for you. And it's on you to get into that, into motion to even be able to expose that. Yeah, to, you know, distinguish that. You know, I, I, I would rather, I would rather fail a hundred times than, you know what I'm saying, have a hundred regrets. You know, mm-hmm. so, you know, anybody that, that does have that goal, you know, uh, and, you know, just right now, it, you don't have anybody to hold you accountable. Drop it in the comment section below. We'll hold you accountable. I'm gonna go through the comments. Jerron's gonna go through the comments. You know, and uh, you know, we, we might reach out to you. You know, make sure you're doing the things that you say you want to do. And um, this is how this is how you know things are are created. Success is built. You know, uh, yeah. us us personally through the summer, uh, we linked up and we you know got what, 20, 20 trucks on the road. Yeah, twenty two. Twenty two trucks run and in, in like two months. You know, that's that's like. A, it's a big jump, you know, it's a lot of work and it was, it was a lot of hard days. A lot of days we didn't feel like doing it. Uh, it was a lot of, you know, un, uncircumstantial, you know, yeah. uh, attributes that was, you know, contributing to us not wanting to do it. You know, the heat, um, all types of problems, you know, when they were going on the road and stuff, but you know, you just got to stay consistent, keep the faith. And, you know, whatever you got planned, whatever you want to do, you can accomplish it. And if you don't accomplish it, you're going to learn. And that's what life is all about, man, just yeah. learning. So it's only it's only failure if uh, if it defeats you, right. if it puts you completely out to where you're like, hey, that wasn't for me. Like I said, things don't have to be for you, but there is something that is. So it's only failure when you just tap out and, and, and let opportunity and that luster, that dream, uh, beat you down to the point where you don't even dream anymore. Okay. Okay. I think that's dope. So pivoting, um, we talked about failure. I think ending that there's so much on the other side of it. Um, so now when we talk about failure, we got to talk about success. Um, when we view success and and it's being overused so much, the word success, like how to be successful, um, you know, secret to success and all, all things like that. When you view success, what, what comes to mind, um, if someone says, are you successful? Or if you say, hey, that person's successful, what does that mean to you? Uh, if someone was to ask me, am I successful? I would say yes. I I view success as, uh, in a sense, like stability. Like, I'm, I'm comfortable with where I am. Mm-hmm. I'm comfortable with the, decision, the decisions I've made. I'm comfortable with, um, you know, the things I've accomplished. And, uh, you know, I know we've talked before and, um, something that you had made me realize is like success is never going to be, you know, one dimensional. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's always going to be something else that you want to accomplish. So like, uh, like for me, for, for example, uh, 
I thought when I when I got on you know got on the team you know made travel squad and all that like oh yeah to the league we go you know it was up from there and it was the exact opposite you know but I accomplished I, I had success I made the team I was on the travel squad I had a, a chance to be you know a starter and all this and that and uh, things just didn't go how I planned it. so I I think uh, I think a lot of people mix up um, success with like a plan and and thinking like you're only successful successful if that plan goes how you how you thought of it. It's never gonna go how you thought, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so, but for someone else, um, if someone asks me what is success, just in a general statement, I think it's just you know going after something and you know setting a goal and accomplishing. It don't have to be some big. Um, I know we talked about this before, and I was like, you know, for somebody it may be who just had a car wreck and for them to have a successful day, they just need to take one step today mm-hmm. and they can sit down on the couch and be happy about that for the rest of the day. So it's, it's just all about, you know, where you are in your walk of life and uh, what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to get, you know, if it's, you know, some, some type of mental barrier you're trying to break and, you know, or like, you know, anything, any type of addiction, you know, success can be any of that. Uh, for me yeah. personally, what so about? so in that I didn't hear anything about money. Oh yeah, no. Nah. Look, I, I I just told you what I made what, six figures in like a matter of like ten months, six or eight months, something like that. And you know, the, nothing was exciting about. I don't remember what I bought. I don't mm-hmm. remember any of that. I remember I remember doing the projects. I remember having fun doing that. Uh, and you know, I've I've been up. I've been broke, and I've been up again. Like. All those, all those feelings feel the same. You still feel the same, but you know, like I say, I I, I enjoy just, you know, presenting the project that I got paid to do, and you know, overwhelming them. Like, man, I didn't think it was gonna turn out this good. That's that's that was what's what was most important to me, not the not the money. Wait, so Chaz, you just you, you know this is going out on YouTube. Yeah, and you just said that you've been broke. You said that out loud. So, oh yeah. So what you mean to tell me is you're human? Oh, most definitely. I'm. Been broke. I've had a car repo. I've had oh, man negative money in my account for consecutive uh, weeks. Like mm-hmm. uh, I've gone back to eating peanut butter and jelly. Like it's it's been bad. Like you know, uh, but that's okay. Like you know, just like you said earlier, if you know you're at the bottom, the only way you can go is up. You know what I mean? Facts. So big facts. So just embrace being at the bottom and know that it, it can't get any worse than this, and that better days are coming. So. Well, hey, I, I, me too. I've yeah. been there too. I've been in some of those situations. Um, after the league, that money runs out quick. Oh, yeah. Uh, but we're here, yeah. and we got good energy, and we've made it back. And we we will have instances where we may, we don't know, we mm-hmm. may lose it again. But but being able to to get through the first time uh, definitely built that muscle to be like, but okay, whatever, whatever comes to me, uh, comes to me, and I'll handle it. You know, I'm built. For whatever situation may come my way, right. I think my relationship with God and uh, the conversation we have about faith, about energy, about attracting mm. uh, good, good to you, uh, is a big factor. So, how have you, how have you life uh, for my people who go through things, for my people who have been in situations where that rent is looking iffy, yeah. that car note is looking iffy, the bank account is looking iffy. I look at it like a, I don't know how many people have ever looked at like a stock chart, but it's always it's it's supplies and demand. So that chart may go up, may go down. That new low is the previous high. So you're constantly going up and down. Mm-hmm. The trend is usually going up. You know, if you're if you are just keep at it. Yeah. And so our, my low now would be what I was dreaming of at my low from five years ago. And uh, I think that's a big point for people to understand that. It doesn't it doesn't shape you as a person. I posted something the other day that said your situation is around you. It's not you. Right. right? So uh, whatever happens obviously didn't change who you were. Obviously didn't change the dreams you had, the luster you had for that pinnacle that you're trying to reach from the streets that you were chosen to take. So uh, commend you to commend you for that. Uh, And I said we didn't mention money when talking about success because for so long I I, uh, equated success with money. Yeah. Um, Then I had money. And I still didn't feel successful. Right. Um, the the biggest thing for me uh, when I think of success is impact. Like, how can I impact? For me, I'm real passionate about the youth. I used to go uh, before COVID. 
go speak at a juvenile detention centers, go volunteer time. A lot of this stuff never even got posted because it wasn't about that. Yeah. It was about them. It was about those. And those kids had some situations loving kids, but they was doing some serious stuff like robbing, robbing stores, yeah. robbing Taco Bell, stealing cars. Uh, but when I get around, you know, they just little kids uh, who were who were happy to have somebody see them as a, a kid, a person. Yeah. We hooping, we talking trash. Uh, of course, using the NFL as that that icebreaker. But then after a while, really being able to break through that that threshold uh, or that wall they were, they were holding up. And so for me, success um, equates to impact. Yeah. And also, I think success, like you said, success ends. But that's what makes you successful because you succeeded. And usually a person who has succeeded once will continue to strive to to succeed. So as long as you're striving to attain uh, whatever goal it is, then you're in the realm of being successful. Um, so I look at success as a to be determined. When I die, yeah. y'all let me know. If I was successful. Yeah, not, was yeah. I successful or was I not? <laughs> uh, and I can only measure that with myself is how many lives I've impacted, how many people uh, who look at me and say, okay, whether I know them or not, I got something good from that guy. If if I at my funeral, people are saying things good about me, then I was successful. Cool. Bank account don't matter. Nah, not at all. You can't take it with you. You know, it's only, only some you know, materialized, so facts so I, I know we came in here with uh with this intro episode what are you know we got we got the failures out the way we got success out the way we got what streets to sweets uh, really means out the way what can uh, people expect as far as you know the type of guests we'll have on here um the type of content that we're going to continue to put out uh I, I think you know they can expect to see uh just you know, outside of us, you know, the guests being one, uh, just people that are still working, still striving to get to their pinnacle, um, you know, whatever walk they may be. You know, we might have some people on here that are, you know, gurus in their, you know, their uh, area or their, you know, their uh, business, whatever it may be. Um, maybe like some life coaches, maybe like a, you might have a personal trainer come here and explain, like, you know, what you need to be doing outside of working out if that's something that you do. Um, as far as content, man, we're going to, you know, keep trying to keep you guys motivated. Um, drop little gems, you know, something that, you you know, we might want you to want to emphasize from this episode or previous episode or, you know, just somebody that's doing good in the community um, or, you know, just the word in general. You know, uh, you can expect to see those people on this show. Um, I think, you know, I think that's pretty much, you know, pretty much that's important. It. That's important. I think being able to, contrary to popular belief, majority of people are, I won't, I don't want to say regular, but mm. social media, how you thinking everybody's a celebrity. Oh yeah. Uh, so I think it's important. Like you said, we bring people on who are succeeding in their fields, whether right. that be sales, cybersecurity, um, trainers, yeah. building up businesses, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, because getting, getting exposure, being able to expose people to so many different streets will probably what we, what we talked about, that's going to lead people to, their mind to be open to what's really available and what's out there for them. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, another big goal. I, I think that was like detrimental for like my growth. Um, uh, where I grew up, you know, where I grew up, it, it's, it's literally like you, you have to play sports to make it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, I wanted to, I wanted to be, you know, at an early age, I knew that like, I didn't, I didn't want to be just, another athlete i know yeah. i know i want to be able to come back and show them like hey you can do it this way and uh i can i can say you know with a clear heart like i've, I've been able to do that like I, I know a couple people that have you know picked on and picked up cameras um you know or i've helped them start up like fashion fashion uh companies oh, uh right. brands that's not fashion company but brands um all types of things you know and, and like you say i, I get more of a like euphoric feeling from just knowing like I helped them mm -hmm. do something like that. They 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 saw something in me, and uh you know got got some type of motivation and you know turned it into inspiration and did some. So that's that's more fulfilling than any hundred dollar bill. Yeah. Facts, facts, man. Money, money is now. Money is a tool. <laughs> money is necessary. Yeah. It's necessary to it's necessary to even be able to give back. Um, it's necessary to survive. But I think putting the emphasis on Money, cars, clothes, and things 
uh, really kind of takes a piece of our spirit away uh, the more the more we see it. Right. Because it's not about God. And I'm not like a preacher or anything, but I grew up in a church. My parents were pastors. And I even noticed myself getting really distant from uh, from my relationship with God, from yeah. what I grew up on, knowing, you know, my Veggie Tales videos and things like that. Yeah. My, my prayers at day and night. Uh, but it all goes together. It all ties in together. And so uh, being able to get away from material and focus on uh, impact and focus on, you know, the heart and and being able to expose people to opportunities. And like I like what you said, that accountability, maybe maybe that's what we do. We create a create a group where people who feel like, hey, I don't have anybody out there who's holding me accountable. My mama don't believe in me. Yeah. My daddy don't believe in me. And that may be the fact. Yeah. You know, so, but you got us. You got you got Chaz Davis. You got Jerome. Mm-hmm. You know. So, most definitely don't 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 feel like you got anybody. And DMs are open. You know, we'll, we'll leave all that uh, comments open. We'll put an email address if you want to send questions. You know, anything like that. You know, feel free to send us to send them to us. Ask us. You know, we're here to help, and we want to help you guys. So. Hey, from experience, get in early. Get in early. Start communicating early because when I when I started the Pro Hall TV brand uh, YouTube channel, I told you my goal was to get a hundred subscribers mm-hmm. and then a thousand before I exposed it to everybody else. And so I was, I'm locked in with people who started DMing me yeah. and contacting me because it wasn't as much traffic. Right. But as we got to 17k, it was like, all right, now it's, it's getting really, a little hard. Yeah. yeah. But those same people are locked in. So uh, lock in. I uh, will put the links to everything uh, within the video um, uh, in the descriptions and everything like that on the YouTube channel, on our Instagrams, things of that nature. Um, so it, it sounds like we're coming to an end, but recapping things, what are, you know, one or, or two or three things that you would really <coughs> emphasize uh, to our viewers about what we discussed today? Uh, first being, don't be afraid. Uh, not, don't be afraid to you know start the business. Don't be afraid to go in the gym. Don't care about what anybody thinks. You know, go into w- whatever it is that you want to accomplish with supreme confidence, and I promise you, you'll get to the other side and be like, man, that's it. That yeah. was all it was. Okay, cool. I can do this again. I can do this for another ten years. I can do this for however long you may need to do it. And you know, and uh, just 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 get around good people. Uh, I know y'all hear that all the time, but man, it's important. Um. Uh, just, just having somebody that's holding you accountable, uh, somebody you can lean on, somebody you can ask questions to. You can do all that here with us, and uh, you know, find find the people in your circle that you you know most comfortable with, that uh, believe in you. And I think I think you know, anything that you want to do, you can accomplish. So yeah, nah, that's definitely have that strong circle. I guess piggybacking off of that, uh, tips I would leave people with based off of what we talked about here today, uh, is be able to open that circle as well. And understand it's not fake. It's not, you know, uh, turning on your people. It's not acting different. But there are some, like you mentioned uh, at the beginning, sometimes you may need a tow truck to get somewhere. Yeah. As in other people may be that helping point for you to get to that next level. Um, So be able to accept that, be able to talk to people, be able to meet new people, and ultimately figure out a way to add value so that people want you where they're at. People want you to have a seat at their table. Uh, People want you involved in these discussions. And although it's transactional, you build beautiful relationships from that. And what you figure out when you get in the business world is most relationships start off as a transaction. Um, Then it's the character that builds that connection. And now those transactions turn into multiple transactions, which turns into more money, more impact, uh, and more you can do. So, Uh, don't be afraid to open that circle up. I know we we say we keep our circle small and things like that, but uh, being able to open that circle as I've done for to you and you've done to me, yeah. uh, and now we're here, right? So Time I think that's dope. I think that's going. dope. And uh, I mean, but outside of that, you know, I'm gonna leave you guys with this. I I read this uh, maybe like a week ago, and it kind of made me it changed my perspective on the way I was viewing things that were happening to me in my life, and. Before I say that, I want you to think about like all the times you've told yourself like, man, if if this can just happen, if I can just make this happen, if I can just get this amount of money and everything will be cool, I can pay, take care of this. It said maybe God didn't give you what you wanted because you, you knew you deserved way more. So yeah, things are going your way. Just know it's more to come. So. 
we gotta end it right there. That's yeah. dope. Peace.